everyone, and welcome to Revival Cry. I'm so excited to come to you today and share with you a word that the Lord has put on my heart. Can you believe it? It is actually 2022. It's amazing how fast time time goes by, you know, and, and now we're already entering a new year. It seemed like the holiday season just went by so quickly, but we're starting a new year. And when I was praying, I said, Lord, what, what do you have to say for 2022? And as I was meditating in the Lord, you know, in his word, just worshiping, this theme came to my mind that are we going to be surviving or thriving in 2022? You know, surviving is when we focus on protecting ourselves. You know, thriving is when we choose to serve others in order to glorify Jesus. A lot of people have been just surviving, especially the past couple years because of you know, travel being shut down and, and people being in their homes and not being able to be with their friends or go to school or have uh, church services, things like that. And so we became very inward focused. But, you know, thriving is when we serve others to glorify Jesus. And, you know, that might seem like a hard thing to do. I don't know where you're listening uh, to this right now, but maybe the situation that you're in, you don't have a lot of freedom right now. There could be real restrictions by the government or, you know, there could be a tremendous amount of COVID cases. I, I don't know. But what I do know is that whom the Son, Jesus Christ, sets free is free indeed. And no matter if we have the freedoms like we had before or not, we are still commanded by God to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. You know, I've said this several times already that a lot of people, you know, they might look at, you know, COVID and, and all these restrictions as a bad thing. And, and it has been across the board, uh, you know, around the world. However, you know, there's people who are suffering for the gospel in so many different countries, there's people who are in prison for just talking about Jesus. But yet, they still thrive. Even through the persecution, the hardship, the challenges that they face, they still want to glorify Jesus. And I want to encourage you today that God doesn't want you to just survive in 2022. He wants you to thrive. He wants you to, to move forward and listening to the voice of God and watching how God would use you, even though you might think, well, how are you going to use me, God, in the situation that I'm in right now? You know, people have been living in survival mode. You know, we've had to distance ourselves from each other, you know, wear masks, some places even face shields. There's been limited social interaction. You know, and while I believe it's important that we take care of ourselves to remain healthy, I believe it's also affected our ability to reach out to people. You know, we, we shouldn't be afraid because, you know, the human race has been around for thousands of years. And in and, and all of this, there's been all kinds of pandemics and sicknesses. And while we need to use wisdom, we need to continue to understand that the great commission of Jesus Christ to take the gospel either to our neighbors or to the nations is still important today. You know, we, we have some friends of ours who live in the state of Georgia. And several years ago, they adopted a, a young child uh, who was uh, from China. And they have not only adopted a child, but adopted all the very challenging situations this child has been dealing with. Let me, let me give you a little bit about what they told me about what has happened to their child. You see, Ezra is his name, and he was adopted four years ago. 
He was one out of 750 plus children in his orphanage. He had very little personal care. He was left in his crib for most of the day, so much so that his head is permanently mishap, misshaped, I'm sorry, and flattened on the back. Uh, when they got him, he was only two and a half years old, and he had never eaten solid food. He was just getting liquids, bottles. He didn't like to be touched or held at all. Think of this. He would take his bottle by himself to a corner to eat and would get really mad if you came near him. You know, when people are isolated, we're, we're, not, we're not supposed to be isolated from each other. God created us to need him and to need one another. That's how we, we sur survive in life. You, you can't survive by yourself. Yeah, people can survive on food and water and shelter and all those things. But really, if we want to be healthy, not just physically, but emotionally, you know, in, in so many ways, we are called to be in need of one another, to honor one another above ourselves, to outdo serving each other in love. And just like Ezra, you know, he would, he would isolate himself like many people have uh, been isolated these last couple years. And he would disassociate, he would check out from reality, sometimes 60 plus minutes at a time. His, is this what his brain did to cope with the lack of human interaction that he had? He had uh, untreated, severe sleep apnea where he would wake up fully every 90 seconds. He's not getting his deep sleep for his body. Because of all this neglect, he was never diagnosed in China. And, you know, this also could have easily led to further development mental delays and seizures, uh, which actually he does have today. He's been diagnosed with autism, uh, although it, they think it could be institutional autism due to lack of human interaction. And listen to this, ever since our friends adopted Ezra and brought him to their home, he's had multiple hundreds of doctors, special, specialist visits, lots of prayer, care, love. Uh, we know the community, the church that these folks are in and serve. And I'm telling you, we've known these folks since 2002. They're incredible people. Uh, he's had so much love, care, working with special uh, neurodevelopmental school that he goes to. And they are seeing improvements. Uh, and, and he's no longer disassociates himself. Listen to this. He, he no more, there's no more self-harm punching himself in the head, banging his head on the ground. Uh, he interacts and connects with people now. I mean, look at this. All because of this couple taking on this child who radically changed their own lifestyle. You know, everything they do is surrounded about this boy. They love Jesus. Jesus is the center of their life. And that's the reason why I believe they took on this young boy. But now because they are loving him and dealing with all these issues that he had, has, you know, he's beginning to thrive. He's not just in survival mode anymore. He's feeling like he's loved in a home, a family, a community that cares about him. My friend, we need one another. And, and, and he interacts with people. He is attached to family and shows affection. He receives affection and shows preference to those he knows and loves. He started developing in every way. And even though he's significantly delayed about the level of a two-year-old, he is still progressing. And that's good news. Look, you might feel so alone and so distant from people. And does anybody care or know where you're at in this life? My friend, you are not too far from Jesus. I want you to know that if you will first come to the Lord, if you don't feel like you can come to anybody else, come to Jesus. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And, and he will begin to teach you how to be healed. And he'll put people in your life that will help you to come out of your shell and be restored in your emotions and your mental capabilities. And in every way, I'm telling you, Jesus not only heals physical bodies, he heals us all the way around. Amen. 
You know, he has huge developments uh, in receptive language, being able to accomplish small two to three step tasks, so much reduction in outward seizures. He's happy, joyful. And but whereas before he would just scream for multiple hours every day. You know, I don't know what the future holds for Ezra, but I can tell you this, because he's in a family amongst people who love him, I believe he's got a bright future. I believe he's got a future where he's going to thrive and we're going to hear testimonies one day of how God has used this young man's life because everybody has a purpose in this life. I want you to hear that today. God has a plan, a purpose for you. He doesn't want you to just survive this year. He wants you to begin to thrive, my friend. Hallelujah. You know, They've been up all the time. They've been drained emotionally, physically. Uh, I'm speaking of my friends who adopted Ezra. It's physically, spiritually, you know, we've met with them. We've gone to their church, and it's, and it's been incredible, the love that they have shown for this boy. And let me say this. They've adopted two other boys from different nations who are thriving, absolutely thriving. They may not have had the problems the physical problems and, and, and emotional things that Ezra did, but they had their own issues. And I want to tell you, we see these boys, they're teenagers now, and they love the Lord. They're thriving. Friend, I'm telling you, if God can take an orphan from another country and put them in a family that would love on them and help them to learn that they don't have to just survive anymore, but that they can thrive, he can do this with you. A lot of people, we, we develop an orphan spirit sometimes where we, we entertain thoughts and we, we replay images and experiences that we've had in our lives and we think, does anybody care? Does anybody know? And we, we believe those ungodly thoughts where the enemy comes in and he captivates us and he draws us away from the Lord and then we're, we're, we're wondering why we're so depressed and hopeless. Friend, you got to get around the Word of God. you got to get around people who love Jesus more than you do. you you, you got to give yourself over to serving other people and not just being the receiver all the time because I'm telling you, you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. You know, they still have many challenges with Ezra, our friends, but you cannot help but think, what if nobody came and touched this child? What if, what if, you know, what if nobody cared to go to this other nation and adopt a child who isn't their own physical child, isn't a blood relative, but yet the care and the concern that they had for orphans, they went to the other side of the world, and now this boy's life is being changed. You know, I don't believe Ezra would have the quality of life that he has now. And, you know, I want to say to you folks that we, we got to not be so inward. You know, God does something inward in us as we look upward at him so that we can see outward and what has happened on the inside of us comes out of us to go serve people. Listen, if, if any, anybody be born again, if anybody be saved from their sin and know that Jesus has redeemed them from sin, from death, has sav saved them from lust, from, from anger, from selfishness, from pride, from, from all kinds of unforgiveness and pain and bitterness and abuse maybe you went through. Friend, when you know the Son has set you free, what you want to do is tell the world. What you want to do is say, look, folks, there's hope. And, and people need this right now. There's the old Steve Green song, which is, People Need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, he's the open door. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. When will we realize? People need 
the Lord. Oh, I love that song. I love, I love the fact that Jesus came in and set me free from my prison, my isolation, from my hopelessness, from my depression, from my suicidal thoughts. He said, this is the reason why I died on a cross for you, Eric. This is the reason why I forgave you when you didn't deserve it. So that you would have a testimony. So that you would go to the airwaves, to the nations, to those near you and tell them that Jesus not only saves, but he delivers and he heals. Hallelujah. Friend, people need the Jesus in you. You know, the cure to loneliness, pain, fear, torment is found in Jesus. Oh, I believe in doctors and, and medicine. I think those things are helpful. But there's, there's nothing like Jesus. You know, once Jesus comes in, who is the great physician, he knows how to diagnose exactly what we're going through. You see, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And, and God wants us to have faith in him. When you go to a doctor, when you take medicine, you have faith that they have the knowledge that that medicine is going to be able to help fix whatever the sickness is in your life. And when we come to Jesus, we've got to come to him by faith. Not, not with, you know, well, God, if it's your will or or maybe you'll you'll help me if if you if you care. I mean that that's not expressing faith. But when we are wanting to thrive in this life and not survive, we put our faith in God and we say, Jesus, I believe that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe you're not only my savior but my my healer. You're the one who restores my soul. You're the one who knows how to walk me through this wilderness, this desert, and, and this storm that I'm facing right now. You know the way of escape. You know, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There's no temptation that has come against you except that which is common to man, but God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you could bear. But when you are tempted, my friend, he will provide a way of escape so that you will be able to stand up under it. doesn't mean that that way of escape, that God's just going to pick you up out, out of the situation you're in and just plant you somewhere else where it's going to be better for you. But it means that the power that raised Jesus from the dead now lives inside of you. And if by faith you would access what God has made available to you, oh, my friend, I'm telling you, you can, you can be an encouragement to people. You, you see, when we, when we go to serve other people and let them know of the love of Jesus, we are actually expressing faith. We're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it because of what God's done for us. And like Peter and John, when they were told before the Sanhedrin to no longer talk in the name of Jesus, one of my favorite scriptures, I think it's Acts 4.20, it says, we cannot help but talk about the things in which we've seen and heard. What have you seen? What have you heard in Jesus, my friend? What has God done in your life to encourage you, to give you hope? I want you to know that the change that he's brought in your life or wants to bring in your life right now is not only for you, but so that you would become a conduit of the Holy Spirit where the electricity of the Holy Ghost will flow from you the, the presence of the Lord will flow through your body, soul, and spirit. And God will manifest himself, whether it be in a hug, in the form of a hug to somebody, or, or some monetary help that you give, or just serving people with time, or, or whatever it might be. Friend, I want you to know that God is enough. Jesus is enough. And if he is living on the inside of you, you and I are called to thrive by serving other people the love of Jesus. Listen, when we touch someone else, it causes them to feel God's love. How else are they going to know about Jesus unless we go? Unless we share the good news? Unless we demonstrate love? You know, the scripture says that God demonstrated his love for us 
by sending Jesus, putting Jesus on that cross for us. If he just said it in word only, it wouldn't have been enough. That's why Jesus came in a physical body of a man to endure the hardship and the challenges that you and I face. And actually, he passed every one of them. You see, Jesus gives us hope. He shows us that though uh, he was tempted in all ways, just like you and I are, he never sinned. And if we put our faith in this resurrected Jesus, he promises to help guide us through this life. And, and not only for us to just make it to heaven, but to bring a lot of people with us to tell the world of how good he is. Hallelujah. I know you want to tell people about the love of Jesus. I know it's burning on the inside of you. Don't let the enemy make you afraid. Don't, don't let the enemy tell you, oh, you're not good enough. Nobody's good. No, not one. That's what the scripture says. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have messed up, my friend. We're all utter failures without Jesus. But with Christ, we can do everything through him who gives us strength. He is our might. He is our power. He is our strength. That's why we have to thrive. He doesn't call us to just survive. Are you kidding? Why would Jesus die and rise from the dead and say, I'm going to heaven. He ascended to heaven. I go to prepare a place for you. Because he's like, look, there's abundant life for you to live right here, right now on this earth. It's not just when you die and you go to heaven one day, my friend. It's right now. You don't have to be in a mental prison. You don't have to be in an in a emotional prison, in a financial prison. I want you to know there is freedom in Jesus today. And, and those of you who are free, I want you to remember you have the keys to the kingdom. You and I are, go, are called to go and unlock those chains of, of brokenness and hopelessness and depression. I'm telling you. We've got to take the gospel out. Hallelujah. You know, God did not create us to just survive. He created us to thrive. He didn't just say, hey, oh, I hope you guys make it. <laughs> Could you imagine that? It's so sad to me when parents don't raise their children in, with loving correction to, to help their children to be guided in this life. You know, parents are supposed to uh, you know, train up their children the way they sh should go. And when they get old, they won't depart. You know, when children don't grow up with knowing how much their father, their mother loves them and guides them and teaches them and counsels them, <coughs> disciples them along the way, children are not meant to grow up learning just from their friends or life experiences. They're called to learn by those who model. See, this is who Jesus is to us, my friend. He's calling us to follow his example and for you and I to be models of the goodness of God in thought, in word, in deed. I'm telling you, it's possible to live a holy life. I'm not saying you're always going to be perfect. I'm saying that, that in the power of the Holy Spirit, that you can have a thought life that, that is an overcoming life. You don't have to be under the pressure of, of perversion, of, of what your experiences in the past or the negative words that you've heard, you know, the, the curses and things like that. Oh, my friend, it's a new day in Jesus. It always is and always will be. If any man be in Christ, right, he's a new creation. It's a new day. The mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. God's called us to thrive. That's part of what we do as a Christian. You know, we, this means if we do not allow worry to dictate our survival, then we will serve others without fear and help them to know how to thrive in life. Friend, you have keys to unlock people from worry, from anxiety, from stress. You have those keys in Jesus. I want to encourage you to thrive this year. I want to encourage you to go tell them that they don't have to just survive. They can thrive. 
You know, in Proverbs 29, verse 2, listen to this. It's the NIV version. It says, When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. Friend, we don't just need politicians to change everything or celebrities to tell us because they make lots of money and have influence. Friend, we got the word of God and our righteousness doesn't come by our own good works. It comes by faith in Jesus. And I want to encourage you today that it's time for the church of Jesus Christ to thrive. It's time for us that despite who's ruling our countries and influencing our lives, that we most of all hear the voice of our Heavenly Father, that we obey Him, that we trust Him, that we do great exploits for the kingdom of God. I want to encourage you to remember the story of what I shared today about little Ezra. Because look, he was surviving and there was no hope for Ezra until his parents came, his adoptive parents came and said, Ezra, we love you. There's hope for you. We're going to take you in our home. We're going to love on you. My friend, Jesus has adopted you and me. He's taken us on himself. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Friend, the rest he gives is not just good sleep. No, it's, it's, it's peace that surpasses all understanding. Let me pray for you today. Father, in Jesus' name, I don't know who's listening and I don't know where they're listening from. They could be in China. They could be in India. They could be in the Philippines. They could be somewhere here in Iowa, in the U.S. or I don't know, but God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would open their heart today to let them know how much you love them in Jesus' name. My friend, God bless you. Thank you for listening today. I pray that you've been encouraged and that you would contact us. Shoot us an email at info at revivalcry.org. You can also visit our website at www.revivalcry.org. God bless you. We look forward to being with you next week.